Worst car? Watch and find out. Hiya, here's a quick story for you um, about a latest acquisition. Um, a few months ago I had a chance to take up some employment which is uh, entailed a lot of driving like um, 86 miles one way so you know like 190 miles and if you've been watching me before you'll know my favorite normal car that I use is a 2001 Ford Mondeo V6 Gear X and I really like it a lot but it only gets like 30 miles to the gallon and obviously I've got a Grand Cherokee Jeep 4 litre 20 miles to the gallon. I did have a Ford Transit a T350 but I sold that. I did have a Mercedes SLK but I broke that and sold it but anyway that was only getting 30 miles to the gallon and uh, so I had to find something else and uh, as I'm a Ford guy you know it's a small car Ford Fiesta or maybe a Focus or maybe a Toyota I was thinking about Toyota um, Yaris or something like that but it, nothing really rang my bell and then I started looking at the satanic Opel or Vauxhall and I thought Corsa um, I've driven them before when I used to have company cars and things you could get them as a, a loaner and I always thought they were gutless anyway then I was reading up about the 1.4 and one of the reasons why I like the Mondeo is because it's got um, cam chain instead of cam belt and if you do a lot of miles you'll know why obviously because it's like 500 quid to change it and uh, that led me to the 1.4 uh, later model Corsa and uh, then I saw something else and that leads me to this but um, was it a mistake? I bought it on eBay for 1350 it's probably worth half as much as that now which I'll explain in a minute but anyway can you guess what it is yet? Uh, one of the cars I was thinking about getting in, in the Corsa range was the combo van specifically the 1.3 diesel uh, and I probably should have bought it but I saw and you're gonna laugh a Tigra, which I didn't even know what it was. Well, I remember the first one, but I don't remember the second one. And it's retractable hardtop. And because I had the SLK and I used to drive it around with the roof down, I thought that would be the thing to go for. Yes. Now, did I read up about all the issues on these cars? No, nah, of course not. Um, I actually saw one on Auto Trader, and I went to a dealer in Romsey, which is not far from Andover. And I test drove it, but it was pretty awful. Uh, it had done 130,000 miles, I think. It was the 1.4. It looked like this one that I'm in, but it wasn't this one. Uh, it was black with a silver top, and it's got all the leather seats and so on and so on. But it pulled to one side on acceleration. I mean, minor acceleration and uh, braking. And when I looked at the engine, it was like covered in oil. I mean, covered. It was like rubbish. Uh, but I decided I like the concept and I like the car, but not that one. So I looked for another one, and that's when I seen this one that I'm sat in on eBay. And uh, it's kind of like, is this the worst car I ever bought on eBay? And it's sort of yes and no. It's like, if you asked me that a couple of weeks ago, I would say yes. Um, but since then, things have changed a bit. Anyway, let's have a quick look and I'll show you what it's like. Okay, this is it. First thing, rear bumper doesn't fit properly. And the paint, well, it's not very good. It's lucky it's raining, but it's got scratches. And the paint's off here. Yeah. 
and all the silver part of the roof. And the wheels aren't in very good condition, but the tyres are right. Again, scratches. But the interior, very nice seats, and they are very comfortable. Slightly marred by a white mark on there. As you can see, it's only a two seater. It's got air conditioning. Stereo. Electric windows. <sighs> no cruise control. Not much power. Um, but the worst thing is, obviously the reason for buying it is the roof, isn't it? So you want me to show you it with the roof down? I wish I could. Um, it was working. It was working for like two times I used it, it was fine. And then uh, it made sort of bleeping noise and stuff. And I went to open the boot, which is electric. Uh, you press the little silver button at the bottom, back, and it opens or there's a switch on the, the door and the boot wouldn't open. And uh, brilliant. Um, I drove it for about a hundred miles. Then I went to Gatwick, which was where my job was supposed to be. And 25 miles from Gatwick, the engine management light came on. It started running rough. It would hardly accelerate, but I managed to get it there on using part throttle. And I drove it back 80 something miles and it was like, okay, as long as you didn't have to pull away from a standing start because it was rough. And uh, I found out, did a diagnostics, and it was the classic Vauxhall issue, which is the coil pack. So I bought a coil pack, changed the plugs, so there's a hundred pound gone. And you know, I've only had it like two days. Then um, I fixed the air conditioning, I recharged that, that was working. The tape, the, sorry, the CD player seems to jump all the CDs, whatever they are, so that's obviously no good. And uh, then I was looking around at the cosmetics and stuff. Um, I've got another door panel to replace this one because it's all peeling off. But the SLK I had, the interior was like terrible. This, not too bad. I mean, this is peeling off. And this was the original gear knob and I just couldn't live with it. I mean, someone must have worn it with the ring, so I bought another one and like, I didn't realize it was chrome instead of silver, but anyway, it's fine. Then it rained. And those of you who know about Tigras and have looked at them, unlike me, will know that these things leak like a sieve. And I found out that the uh, carpet on the passenger side, especially, was like a swimming pool. So, I got another set of rubbers. These are not new, but they offer a different car. And uh, fitted them on both sides. I also changed these rubbers here on the top of the door. But it still seemed to be coming in and I couldn't figure out why. Mostly in this side. And uh, what happens is these channels fill up and then it just pours inside. And there's supposed to be holes underneath. And if you look, oh, you can't see that. There are holes. I think they're just full of junk, so I need to clean them out because it's especially here. Yeah, look, there's water in there. It's supposed to drain out. So I've got to find the drain holes. But obviously that's not the worst thing. The worst thing is the roof, of course. And uh, 
I looked in the paperwork for the car when I got it and there was a receipt from 2020 where it was taken to a company, which I won't name, but anyway, it's taken to a company near Gatwick, funnily enough, and they're supposed to be specialists in these things. And they replaced loads of bits in the back and some wiring and other things and uh, charged like 600 and something pounds, I think it was, and it, and it was fixed. And I also had the name and address of the owner that had it then on the invoice. So I contacted him to see did you know anything about these problems? And uh, told me there's a, a way to open the boot, which is like a rod that goes in on the side and you can open it. Um, but obviously that's not gonna help. My diagnostics uh, auto doesn't tell you about the roof because there's no problem with the car. I mean, there was with the misfire and everything, it showed me that, but not about the roof. It's a specialist part. And uh, everybody was recommending you can get a special program or a special interface for voxels and I got one it's like 20 pounds I'll show it in a minute I can't remember what it's called and uh, put it on my laptop anyway and it said that the fault is in the boot it's got locks on the side it's got a lock at the back and locks at the side because obviously the boot normally opens that way but if the roof is gone up it opens the other way so it has to be able to open both ways and it's got these locks and the left hand one it's saying it's open closed. So, I mean, I do fire systems and stuff. Open closed means it's not seeing it. It doesn't know what state it's in. And with these voxels, because it's the electric boot and everything, if it thinks the boot isn't locked or in the right position, the roof won't work. And it's like a round robin. So the, the boot won't work because it thinks the latch is in some position or other and the roof won't work. So it's like catch 22. Um, when I contacted the company that fixed this before, um, obviously they knew this car, and they come up with this great pearl. They said, oh, we need it for three hours to do diagnostics. It was it three hours? It took me like 20 minutes. I can I tell you what it's come up with. Nah, we need to put it on our diagnostics. We need to check it. So needless to say, I haven't. And I bought a um, second-hand lock for that side and I need to what I was thinking of doing is I'm plugging the one that's there and seeing what the computer says if it still says the same which I figure it will and then plugging the other one in and see if it can tell whether it's open or closed because obviously it's open and then go from there but uh, since then I give up that job that I had so I didn't really need this car it would have been better off paying the extra petrol for my Mondeo so let's go back to the beginning is this the worst disaster car that I've ever bought. Uh, yes and no. I'll tell you why I'm going to say no in some ways, because it actually drives really well. Um, the heated seats are beautiful. This weather, I mean, it's really chilly woolly now, freezing, um, but it's lovely. It's just, it would be more lovely if I could open the roof, because the two times when I did, when you open the roof and put all the heat in on and everything, it was beautiful. And this screen on the back, it just doesn't get the you don't get the draft coming through. You couldn't say that about the SLK. Uh, so what am I going to do? Well, next week I'm going away for a week to enjoy myself. Um, but when I come back, I'm going to resume my uh, saga with this. I mean, I've just been to Tesco with this. As like I say, it runs fine. It's a bit annoying. You have to put all your shopping on the passenger seat because you can't get in the boot. Um, Should have really looked up all the forums before I bought it but um, I just like the idea it looked nice and all that I didn't didn't worry about it it, it drove all right um, the roof was working at the time it wasn't raining <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh yes and I've had lots of horrible comments like I must be a hairdresser or even worse well I'm not okay it's uh, actually drives very well. Um, the reason I wanted the Corsa variant of some sort was for the mileage. It doesn't do as well on fuel as I expected. I've done a check on mine. It's like 45. I thought it'd be doing more than 50, but anyway, it's 45 miles a gallon. I don't know if that's good or bad. If you've got a 1400 Corsa, maybe you can tell me what you get. You know, put a message down below and let me know, because I don't know. Um, it didn't help that it was misfiring and that the, you know, the coil pack was on its way out. 
Um, but yeah, that's it really. Uh, in some ways it's the worst car because I bought it for 1350. I spent 100 pounds within two days on the coil pack and the plugs. I bought second-hand rubbers to go all the way around and that was like 50 odd pounds. I bought the diagnostic kit, that was like 20, so it's not too bad. And the roof still doesn't work. Oh, the other, the second-hand latch or locking mechanism I bought, I think that was 45 on eBay. Um, so is it a good idea to buy from eBay? Look, I've bought loads of cars from eBay, loads, and it's up to your own vigilance, isn't it? I don't blame the people I bought it from. I bought another reason why I wanted this one as opposed to the one I tested. This one's done 74,000 miles, which is low mileage. And uh, yeah. the theory is that if it's low mileage and everything, it's been looked after. Well, it did have a service in January, I think, because MOT is in February. So someone, I think what they did, they had it serviced in MOT a couple of times. Then there was the £600 bill for the roof that worked well. Hmm. Um, and a couple of other bits and pieces. So it's like a typical car and the prices of everything are going up and up and up and up. You can't get a decent car. I used to buy cars for like five, six hundred pounds and that's now 1500. So moaning over, I bought the thing. Uh, you can all have a good laugh and uh, I will make some more videos about it. I've I, oh, another thing that fell, the headlight fell. You think that's straightforward to change, but you have to watch a video about that. I did change it, um, but that's even that's a palaver. And then obviously, if a backlight goes and you can't open the boot, you can't take the rear lights off. But like I say, there is a way to open the boot. Um, I'm going to leave it like that for now. Uh, you can make up your mind whether it's a good car or not a good car. Like I say, if it's only a two seater, but that's what I wanted. It's small, it's easy to park. Not that I care, I like big, powerful cars, but. It's good and bad, and uh, I should have bought. I should have bought the vehicle I was going to buy, the combo van, because then it would be useful and frugal. But maybe not. It wouldn't be so well equipped, would it? It wouldn't have these leather seats. It wouldn't have leaking carpets. It wouldn't have a roof that doesn't work. It wouldn't test my mechanical abilities and my uh, computer skills. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed this at my expense. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy it and like all my other videos. Um, like and share and uh, I'll be coming back at you soon with some other videos on which maybe be a bit more positive. Cheers for now. Thanks for watching, much appreciated. Don't forget you can find me on Instagram at Shoestring Motoring and I'm on Facebook as well, same. Uh, now it's nearly Christmas. Merry Christmas to you all.